Hey guys, it's Michael from Devoted to Vinyl, and in this video, we're going to discuss the five mistakes you need to avoid when playing your vinyl records. So over the past few weeks, I've made a few videos aimed at preventing vinyl newcomers from making a couple of mistakes in this hobby. In one video, we talked about the mistakes to avoid when it comes to collecting vinyl records. And in the next video, we talked about the mistakes to avoid when it comes to buying a record player. But in this video, I wanted to discuss the topic of playing vinyl records. And specifically, I wanted to present you with five mistakes you should always avoid when you're playing your favorite albums so that you can have the best vinyl record playing experience possible. All right, so let's jump right into it with number one on my list. All right, so number one on my list is to always do your best to avoid touching the surface of the record you're about to play. Now, when you come in contact with your records, whether you're pulling them out of a record sleeve or you're actually putting them on the turntable, you should always hold your records by the edges rather than on the surface. Now, one big reason for this is that your fingertips contain oil. And so if you touch the surface of the record with your fingers, the oil is gonna get transferred to the surface of the vinyl. Not only can this lead to fingerprints being left on the surface of your record, but the oily spots can also attract additional dust as well. And it's little things like this, especially when it builds up over time, that can lead to additional surface noise that you can hear coming through your speakers. Now to be absolutely transparent, I'm not as overly concerned about this particular subject as much as other people are. Touching the record with your fingers every now and then is not gonna render them unplayable or unlistenable. But if you can avoid doing it, it's always better to be safe rather than sorry, especially if you spend a lot of money on a particular record. You spending 40, 50, 60 dollars for some of these records out here, you better be wearing gloves. Don't use your fingers, crazy. All right, so let's move on to number two. All right, so number two on my list is to avoid playing vinyl records before you clean them. Now this sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. Now if you buy a vinyl record, whether it's brand new or used, but especially if it's used, it's always a good idea to clean your record before you give it a spin on your turntable. Now we just got done talking about how oil on your fingertips can leave fingerprints on the surface of your vinyl records, but that's not the only thing that can be on the surface of your vinyl. In fact, everything from dirt and dust to grime and greasy spots and debris can be embedded inside of the grooves of your record. And when you listen to it, you might hear a lot of ticks and pops and crackles coming through your speakers. And while some of that can be caused by scratches and scuff marks, a lot of it can also be tied to the fact that you're listening to a dirty record. Now I've made a couple videos previously talking about how you can go about cleaning your vinyl records. And if you haven't watched them, I'll make sure to link to them below in the description. But it's always important to remember that you can clean your records by hand by simply using a microfiber rag and a custom made cleaning solution. Or if you wanna automate the process, you can buy a record cleaning machine like the Okinoki. All right, <sighs> number three. All right, so coming in at number three on my list is to avoid being forgetful when you're playing your vinyl records. This is very crucial. You cannot forget that you have a vinyl record spinning on your manual turntable. Now, if you're looking to upgrade from an automatic turntable to a manual turntable, it's important to know that your new record player will require your undivided attention. Now, unlike an automatic turntable, which has a mechanism built inside of it, which allows for the tone arm to pick itself up at the end of the record, bring itself back to its armrest, and turn off the motor, a manual turntable has nothing like that built inside of it. It's manual. Not fully automatic, not semi-automatic, it's manual. So that means that the responsibility now falls on you to always be aware of what's going on with your record player. So if you're accustomed to pushing the start button on your automatic turntable and going into the kitchen and making dinner, or maybe getting under the covers so that you can fall asleep listening to your music, those days are over. Because you don't want your motor to be spinning and 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 spinning indefinitely until you realize that you have to go and lift the tone arm up, bring it back over to its rest, and turn the turntable off. Woo! Ready for number four? Okay, so coming in at number four is to avoid playing your vinyl records 
before you make the proper adjustments to your turntable. Now, if you have a manual turntable, then it's likely that you have the opportunity to make adjustments that can have a significant impact on the sound coming out of your speakers, namely the vertical tracking force and the anti-skate setting. Now, the anti-skate adjustment can take a few different forms. It can be a knob or a dial that you turn, it can be a screw that requires a little bit of an additional adjustment, or it can just be a small weight that's suspended by a thin wire. At the end of the day, in order to get the proper balance of sound coming out of your speakers, you'll wanna make sure that the anti-skate setting is set up properly. Now, vertical tracking force, on the other hand, can be a little bit different. In fact, you're gonna wanna make sure that you adjust the counterweight that's on the back of the tone arm correctly, because doing so will ensure that the right amount of force or pressure is properly properly applied when your stylus goes into the groove of your record. It's also very important to know that the tracking force setting is directly tied to the cartridge that you're using. Some cartridges, like the Ortofon 2M Blue, require more tracking force compared to other ones, like the Ortofon 2M Bronze, which require less tracking force. And also, it's always a good idea to break up the tracking force gauge, just to make sure that your setting is accurate. Now for more on tracking force adjustment and cartridge alignment, make sure you check out some of my previous videos on these specific topics. All right, so number five on my list is very different from the other ones, but here it is. Avoid leaving the volume cranked up really high once your record finishes playing. Okay, so in the midst of making sure that you buy the right turntable and you make the proper adjustments when necessary, it's also important to make very small but wise decisions when it comes to your audio equipment. And at least for me, while I might end a vinyl record listening session by making sure that my amplifier is turned off and I've shut down the turntable and I've removed the record from the turntable's platter, it's also very easy to forget to turn down the volume as well. For me at least, there's nothing worse than waking up the next day, putting a brand new record on the turntable, dropping the needle, and being immediately blasted with music at a loud volume. I hate that. You can't start at top volume, you gotta ease into it. Just like the shock you feel when you get blasted by your music in your earbuds after you push play on your favorite streaming device because you left the volume up high from the last time you listened to it, you can have an equally jarring experience when you're listening to your vinyl records. So do your ears and your speakers a favor by making sure to turn your volume down once you finish listening to your final record of the day. Trust me, your future self will thank you. So that's about it guys. That's my list of five things that I think that you should avoid when you're playing your vinyl records. If you enjoyed this video and you found it to be helpful, please hit the like button down below. I always appreciate it when you do that. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well if you wanna be alerted whenever a new video drops. And before I get out of here, I wanna leave you with this one question. If there could be one aspect of playing vinyl records that you could change for the better, what would it be and why? Make your thoughts known down below. I read every single comment, so I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. And once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.